Put aside Donald Trump's tweets and his media distractions, and here is the policy that the Trump administration is rolling out today, a broad and drastic cut to health organizations that are involved in pro-choice counseling and abortion. That hits clinics, it hits Planned Parenthood, and critics say it could endanger women's health and limit constitutionally protected medical choices. The immediate result here is cuts of millions of dollars in federal funding to any group that provides referrals or even procedures related to abortions, a policy broader than just limiting money for abortion itself, which is already restricted under federal law. This defunds groups that refer women to abortion providers and mandates physical separation between a clinic that gets taxpayer money from an abortion provider. It also slashes over 280 million from clinics. Now, Trump campaigned by saying he would be good for women's health. He said that women are helped by Planned Parenthood, but then on the trail, he also said he would defund it. Planned Parenthood has done very good work for some, for many, many, for millions of women. We're not going to allow and we're not going to fund as long as you have the abortion going on at Planned Parenthood. I'm going to be really good for women. I'm going to be good for women's health issues. I would defund it because I'm pro-life, but millions of women are helped by Planned Parenthood. I am joined now by Elise Hogue, president of NARAL Pro-Choice America, which works with Planned Parenthood, and Wendy Davis, a former Texas state senator who made headlines holding a 13-hour filibuster trying to block an abortion law that restricted access in her state of Texas in 2013. Elise, what does this mean? Well, I mean, Ari, what I think it really means is that they're worried about the upcoming elections and they're trying to throw a bone to their extreme mm. base. But I think it's a terrible miscalculation. We know that the majority of this country supports legal access to abortion, supports Planned Parenthood and other providers, and that our side is really fired up and they're, they're hemorrhaging women voters from their party. So I think it's a tragic miscalculation and it's going to tragically hurt women in the process. Uh, Wendy, part of what uh, is clearly on the table with Donald Trump here is a transactional or negotiated approach to this. We showed the clips that were all over the place. I want to play for you uh, Cecile Richards, who you both know and I think have worked with at times, um, describing her dealings with the Trump administration while she was head of, very relevantly, Planned Parenthood. Take a listen. What Jared Kushner said to me is, um, if I can get a headline that says Planned Parenthood discontinues abortion services, I could probably guarantee your funding. And I said, we will never do that. Wendy, what does that tell you? I'm, I mean, basically what's happening here, Ari, is that there are over four million women in this country, low income women, women of color, who rely on Title X funding for their reproductive care for their birth control, for their preventive care, and for their well woman care. And they are at risk of losing that care. And if you need to see what it looks like to actually carry through um, the kind of defunding that's being talked about at the federal level, you need look no further than my state. That happened here in 2011. Over 80 clinics closed. Not all of them were Planned Parenthoods, and none of them were providing abortion services. And in the process, let's, tens let's of thousands let's pause of women on that. lost their and, care. And I, yeah, I want you to continue, but just to be clear, you're saying that a version of this at the local level acted to close 80 facilities that provided only health care and not actually abortions. That's exactly right. And the, the consequence of that in Texas, which we know we're going to see at the federal level as well, if this is carried out by the Trump administration, we had an increase in teen pregnancy rates when right now in this country, they're at an all time low. We had an increase in Medicaid births and the subsequent cost to taxpayers for those births. And we had an increase in maternal mortality. That same consequence is being seen because of the global gag order that the Trump administration is now talking about putting in place domestically here. So, so Wendy, women, let me, let me ask women it, are going to be hurt. Let me ask it this way, because you're, you're really laying out the actual microcosmic results of this in a place where it was tried. There's a constitutional question about whether something that the Supreme Court says is a right in this country. People can debate it. There's a lot of debate about it, uh, but women have a right to, to this choice under the current law, and that's one conversation. The second is the actual impact, and what you're, what you're proposing for you and then Elise as well weigh in is that on the narrower question of the results, this kind of thing can actually increase the number of teen pregnancies when applied? No yeah. question, because when you remove people's access to contraceptive care, they 
um, have more unintended pregnancies. It's just a natural consequence. I'm sorry, Elise, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Wendy, you can always interrupt me. <laughs> um, I think the third piece, which we haven't yet talked about, Ari, but is equally important, is that not only does this limit service and have devastating health care effects, in fact, counter to what they say their goal is, but what should really send a chill up people's spines is that this is massive government overreach mm. into the kind of information that we can receive from our medical professionals. And that is because they know if women and have the truth about our options, their agenda folds. And we've seen them looking for ways to lie and deceive women every which way they can. We've seen the scorched earth approach, not only in Wendy in my home state of Texas, but also under Vice President Pence in Indiana, where not only did teen pregnancy go up when they closed all the health clinics, but HIV rates went up and maternal outcomes went down. So no price is too high for these people to play pay in their quest to end legal abortion and control women's lives. It's, it's very educational, honestly, listening to both of you. I think people who might even disagree, as we know there is disagreement around the country about some aspects of this issue, uh, would hear things tonight that would really give you pause to this kind of federal restriction, which, as we mentioned, is uh, one of the most important stories in America tonight, uh, which is why it's on our broadcast. Elise Hogue and Wendy Davis, thanks to both of you. Thank you, 